Welcome to a very special edition of uh, the Gaming Grotto, only on the Guff and Stuff Radio Network. I am your host, Ezekiel Garcia, and uh, joining us is none other than uh, Revenge of the Sunfish creator, Jacob Oshinsky. You're probably asking yourself, who is Jacob Oshinsky? Well, Revenge of the Sunfish was a game released around 2008, and uh, it's quite uh, an adventure, if I do say so myself. Uh, very colorful all that good stuff. I can honestly say I'm the, probably the only person that understands what he was trying to do with it. But nonetheless, Jacob is, uh, was a very nice guy, and uh, it was very neat to talk to uh, such a to such a enigmatic person, an iconoclast, as he liked to describe himself. Um, anyways, um, here is uh, the interview that uh, that me and Josh conducted with uh, Mr. Bashinsky. Hello. Hello, hey, how's how you doing, Jacob? Uh, good. Uh, um, how are you going? <laughs> oh, we're doing well. We're doing well. We're uh, yeah. How is it in Australia right now? How's the weather? Well, it's actually um, it's been quite cold because it's winter at the moment. It's about nine degrees, so yeah, mm-hmm. and raining and overcast. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I'm hurting. <laughs> um, is it like in your in Melbourne? Is there is it? Is it a, how much, I'm trying to word it in, uh, in a way that would make sense. Um, how is the, how uh, is life there in Melbourne? <laughs> How's fl- life yeah. in uh, M- Melbourne? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's pretty good, I guess. I'm living in a share house. It's, well, it's actually kind of like a hippie commune, basically. Oh, okay. So, yeah, no, Melbourne's pretty good, I guess. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a little. There's a good music, uh, live music scene. And oh, really? Yeah. Like, who, what kind of bands show up there? Um, quite a few bands. Mm-hmm. Uh, Killing Joke is playing soon. Mm. Uh, Does Bush show up a lot there, too? Does what? Uh, the band Bush. Um, I've not heard of the band Bush. Oh, because, because uh, according to... Um, American uh, music, uh, the American music scene. Apparently, Bush is the biggest band in Australia. Um, really? They're a late, ni- they were popular in the late nineties or something like that, and uh, apparently they're huge. And uh, and it's pretty funny to hear that a fellow Australian has never heard of them. <laughs> well, I'm I'm a bit of an iconoclast. I kind of live under a rock, so I'm not aware of very much that's going on. I just yeah. sort of. Yeah, make my games, and get to, I don't go out that much. So, okay. so um, speaking of games, um, uh, Jacob, we know. Well, I go to your website a lot, and um, I'm going to be fairly honest amongst the gamers that uh, I hang out with because I pretty much hang out with all gamers, pretty much. Uh, Josh, uh, who sits in front of me, isn't so much. I try to get him into the groove of things, um, but. Revenge of the Sunfish is definitely a game that has baffled all my friends. Um, to me, I mean, I can, you know, to me, it's like something quite spectacular, if I do say so myself. Um, but to my friends, they're just so confused. I mean, like, when you initially uh, released uh, the original Revenge of the Sunfish, like, what was the reaction um, that... Uh, the people who played, uh, like, uh, responded? Like, how was the response? Um, I think the, the people who played it and generally liked it, I, I don't think I showed it to very many people at first. I think just a few of my friends played it. And mm-hmm. then um, I think uh, my what happened was my computer crashed and um, I decided to release the game. And I... I didn't really use the internet for a while, so I didn't really realize that it had become quite popular on the internet. So, mm. uh, but yeah, I think it's, I think it got good responses from most people that played it. I mean, some people uh, cr- I know criticize the graphics, and mm. but it's sort of more about um, it's more about the experience as a whole, I guess, rather than just yeah. individual bits. So yeah, because because uh, the one thing that. Uh that kind of uh, surprised me a bit was the fact that there's multiple paths you can take. 
like with a game yeah. like this, I never really uh, would expect it such a thing, um, considering like how sporadic it is and how chaotic it is. Because to this day, oh, most so- of my friends are just baffled by it. Um, yeah, yeah, the non-linear path thing. Um, that's sort of the whole idea of it. I actually wanted to have. Um, I wanted to have a lot more split paths, and in the end, I only did a few. So there's not, there's only, there's a few, um, not quite as many as I would have liked. But I've been working on Revenge of the Sunfish two for ages now, and that kind of, um, that fills out what um, what my expectations for the original mm-hmm. were more like. Like it's got a lot more split paths, and yeah, um, I'm actually going to be. Uh, I'm going to a game show in two weeks' time in the UK that, uh, called Rezzed, and I'm going to be showing showing off the sequel there. So look, looking forward to seeing what sort of responses that gets. So, yeah. Yeah, because it seems like uh, like most of the res- – generally, just by what you've said and what, uh, you know, I read online is that the general response is, you know, very good. And, like, when – when you go out to you know to the UK you know to show off these games you know it's I mean does it like is it one of those things where it's like you're just some sort of like underground uh, deal or is it like do people like you know can recognize you like fellow gamers or something like that? Uh, well, I don't know. I, this is the first time I've ever been I- invited to a um, show to show off um, one of my games. Uh, so um, yeah, I feel I think. I think I'm still pretty underground. I, I did meet, um, I met someone at a nightclub once who, <laughs> who was a game um, reviewer and he was aware of my games and he, he reckoned that quite a few people knew about them. So I do meet people from time to time who like heard of some of my stuff. So. Oh, oh, okay. Um, By the way, c- could I just ask you a question? Can you actually see me at the moment? Uh, no, we cannot. Okay. Yeah, this is all audio. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I've never actually used Skype before, so this is my first time. Okay. Well, this is our first interview, so, you know, this is the first time for everybody in a way. Cool. Thankfully. <laughs> um, so, Revenge of the Sunfish 2, um, you know, I've, I've, I've read on your website that you, uh, that you may uh, release this um, in a few weeks' time. Um, yeah. do you have an exact date when it'll be released or is it just, it'll just, uh, be released whenever? Um, well, it, it's not, it won't be released whenever, like I'm working towards completion, but I think maybe okay. the estimate on my site mm-hmm. might be a bit off. I've been saying for the last uh, couple of years, actually, oh, I'll have it finished within three months time. But now I can say with a bit of confidence that I can see the end in sight and that I reckon it probably would take me more than uh, actually a few months' time this mm-hmm. this time around. I mean, I yeah, it's very really very close to completion. And actually, this um, festival that I'm going to, it's really pushed me to get it closer to um, completion. I mean, I'm only going to be showing the demo, but it's almost the completed game, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm actually feeling very positive about it, and I think it's going well. So yeah. Um, I guess another question that a lot of people uh, would uh, would ask you is like games like Revenge of the Sunfish, uh, Pasta Master, which is a game that I've been playing recently. Um, oh, yeah. Like, where do you like the? For lack of a better term, where would you say your inspiration draws from? Um. Well, I, I do I do write down a lot of my ideas from dreams, um, mm. and I think that's my favourite source of inspiration. And just whenever I have I have ideas and I write them down, but um, I, I also do brainstorming, and I like talk to my friends and say, "Oh, what do you think would be a good idea?" And we sort of discuss, "Oh, maybe this," and then sort of. But then there's another thing. When I start actually working on a game, maybe I've got an idea written down and then it starts getting a life of its own and sort of evolving once you're actually working on it because I see, like, maybe it can be tweaked this way and that sort of changes it into some other game. Like, um, one uh, game designer that influenced me quite a lot was um, probably uh, Jeff Minter and some of his games were, like, uh, a lot of his games are sort of based on arcade games like um, Centipede, and he sort of 
but then he kind of changed the dynamics so it became like a new game so hmm. yeah hmm. well are you mostly um like uh, uh so you play uh, obviously you play video games yourself correct um yeah i do okay. <laughs> but i played too many recent ones um i'm not really very up to date with um how video game technology and what's what's the latest stuff i like um i had a ps1 for a bit a few years ago and i liked parappa the rapper and <laughs> Vib Ritten and a lot of japanese games so uh, yeah um how is the like the market in australia uh speaking of games there like uh, I know, I understand that um, like the uh, the rating system is a lot more strict than it is uh, elsewhere. Um, would that would you say that would be a part of, as to why you know you haven't been keeping up with the with the latest games, or is it just you know you just um, no, I've just been too busy. Um, mm. Yeah, uh, ratings. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think I heard that they wanted to introduce stricter rating systems in Australia, but don't yeah, uh, I don't know too much about that at the moment. Yeah, the reason I <laughs> the reason I ask is because um, there are uh, every time you hear about a controversial game being released, you know your Grand Theft Autos, you know yeah. games like that. Usually, the first usually the first thing that comes to mind is whether or not Australia has banned it from sale. Oh, and, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And like... Um, oh, didn't you? Sorry about that. I was going to say, it's interesting, because I think the the um, age of the average gamer is something like 31 years old. So... Exactly. It's, it's really... It's an adult market. Mm. So... Um, but I think... Uh, the reason it's the laws are so strict is because... Um, I guess it's the idea it's interactive and mm. like if you passively watch a movie somehow it doesn't influence you but I don't know uh, I just yeah. think because I, I think honestly it's just a, it's a commonwealth thing um, because oh. I understand that the UK and Canada also of all places have very strict rules so it was like it just seems like it's a much more uh, difficult uh, market to yeah I shouldn't to. actually I shouldn't be selling um Revenge of the Sunfish 2, actually, unless I get it rated. But it's actually quite expensive to um, have it rated. So um, one person pointed out to me that if when I'm at the airport um, going to this festival in the UK, mm. um, theoretically they could confiscate it off me if, uh, if they found out that it was unrated or oh, something. Oh, wow. But I, I think that's very unlikely to occur. So. Oh, okay. Well... I mean, it's just it. It just seems like it's a different world in a way, because here in the United States, it's like we have this. Uh, are you aware of the ESRB? No. What's What's the ESRB? Um, it is the rating system in which all video games in the United States get rated upon. There's you know rated E for everyone, which is like the which is like a younger audience. T for teen which is obviously for uh, 13 and up, and there's the M-rated games, which is like the R rating. Um, and and uh, rarely, there's this one rare tab, there's this one rare uh, rating um, called uh, AO, which is adults only, and rarely does a game get that uh, label slapped on it. And it just, you know, it's really funny to see how, you know, Elsewhere, you know, overseas, there's just this, you know, if if the game is deemed offensive and, you know, in, you know, in any way. What sort of game, do you know, what sort of game would receive a, a rating like that? Would it be to do with violence or, like, like sexual content or something? Uh, believe it or not, it would be sexual content. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. I mean, yeah. <laughs> regards, I think that... The impression I get about a lot of censorship in the states is that it's uh, like showing violence is usually um, more acceptable than um, uh, having uh, having tits or something. Yeah, I think it's quite Puritan in a way. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's it's pretty shameful when you think about it, because I mean I don't want to get too far into this, but um, like like really just nudity is just you know natural state but for some reason it's okay to see 
you know, a guy getting his head shot off, you know, and that's like on night primetime television, you know what I mean? Yeah, Network yeah. television. So, yeah, there is really a bizarre priority with our censorship r- rules. We do have a bizarre priority because it's like, as soon as, like, you know, there's, like, full frontal nudity or something like that, then, you know, they're going to be, you're pretty much, um, <clears throat> You're uh you're pretty much uh treading into dangerous waters, um in terms of censorship. But you know, I mean, I mean, it's really it's really easy to just you know find loopholes and stuff like that. I mean, there's so many things you can exploit to you know make sure you don't get that adults only rating. Hmm. Um. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any other questions about um my, my games or the? Um, well, another question we would like to ask is um, something I've always been curious um, because I understand that uh, that uh, I'm guessing that uh, the games that you do is by yourself. Um, yeah, I I design my um I design my games on my own. Uh, I used to have a friend who used to help me. Um, well, a few years ago, like um. When I was in high school, me and a friend of mine used to make games, but um, yeah, now it's just me. Uh, okay, because because I always wondered, you know, you know how what kind of environment do you work under? Um, because it really does seem that it's just, just like a one man show, judging on by your uh, by your website and uh, your projects. Not not that I'm you know uh, uh, bashing anything about it at all. You know, a matter of fact, I kind of like uh, applaud you for it. Um, but like, I've always been curious, you know, what's it like, you know, what kind of environment do you put yourself in order to create these games? Well, uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. I've actually got, um, I have a very strict, um, working routine and Mm -hmm. I like, I like to wake up, um, pretty early and, um, try to design, design games and I work till like, um, about two o'clock every day and i eat a lot of kangaroo sausages <laughs> <laughs> is that a thing yeah that is a, that's a major thing oh, oh do you gosh. mean in australia or mm. i have never heard of kangaroo sausages uh it's just a thing that I, I do i actually not too many people i know um really eat kangaroo sausages but mm. they're actually quite cheap and oh um, really yeah i just boil them and eat them with toast <laughs> and wow that sounds like breakfast of champions right there <laughs> yeah um yeah that's what i do uh, and i do a lot of tea as well mm. yeah like so it's like is it stressful at all knowing that like you know that th- you're doing this yourself or is it like you know you s- you uh, a bit more sense of freedom um it, uh, i yeah a bit of a sense of freedom i guess mm. I, I like having creative control over yeah. the project however um i think i might be after i finish uh, revenge of the sunfish 2 i think i might um do a few projects where i might work with some other people because mm. just to spread the work load out because um like uh doing everything for quite a large game is a lot of work like uh, i composed a lot of music for this game and that took me a lot of time actually like um yeah i composed 1000 songs uh, Ooh, wow songs, and that took me uh, a few years and i think I, maybe I, I focus too much on that because now i'm more c- concerned with since i finished that i don't do that anymore but i'm concerned about the gameplay side of things mm-hmm. so i'm just focusing on like doing the level design and that sort of thing mm-hmm. but it's it's good to know that i've got um original music mm-hmm. to choose from so I'm uh, happy about um, do you have any other uh, besides eating kangaroo sausages on toast and uh, creating games? Is there anything else that you do outside of games? Um, yeah, sort of. Mm. Mm, maybe. Mm. Um, oh, I like to shoot films, like. Um, mm. But I haven't had time to do that for a couple of years. But I am interested in filmmaking, and uh, mm-hmm. I read books, and yeah. Is there any I, like uh, project you're doing in terms of filmmaking right now, as you speak? Uh, no, I've just been collecting together bits of footage, really, um, like interesting things that I've seen, and hoping to edit it into some sort of movie. Like, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, film <laughs> some blimps and 
just some interesting buildings and stuff. But I, I like uh, David Lynch's films. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. And I'm pretty sure yeah. Josh in front of me is too. Oh, geez. Um, well, 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 you'll be glad to know, Josh, that, um, that, uh, his movies are great and you should watch them. Anyways, um, well, I know you said earlier that, uh, that you haven't really been keeping in touch with, uh, with today's, uh, gaming. Um, but I'm actually kind of curious as to know, um, do you still own any consoles, uh, as of right now? Mm. Uh, I think at my parents' house, um, there is, I think there's an Atari 2600. Oh, wow. Basement. <laughs> is, um, it, is it fully functioning? Well, I haven't, I haven't actually used it for many years. So oh, okay. I couldn't answer that question. <laughs> I think it's also, um, there's an Atari Lynx, I think. Oh, also. Jesus. I reckon that's probably functional. <laughs> But um, they're in they're in Tasmania. My parents have a house in Tasmania, and I've mm. actually been there for a few years. So, um, no, I've got some PC games on my computer, but oh, okay. I don't actually own any consoles. Oh, okay, so it's all PC for you. Um, way. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, sometimes I play uh, console games at uh, like a friend's house or something. Oh, um, okay. I've got a PSX emulator on my computer. Oh well, so do we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stuff rocks. Um, well, um, is there uh, anything else that uh, you would like to plug before uh, we let you go? Um, uh, not that I can think of. Uh, just that, that uh, I think people should look out for Revenge of the Sunfish Two because I will have it finished soon, and it's a really cool game. And yeah, that, that's my only major plug. <laughs> uh, it's going to be at the Game Expo in um, Birmingham. Right. Birmingham. Right. All right. Well, um, we uh, we greatly appreciate uh, this uh, this uh, quick uh, interview right now. Um, we are still in our infancy on the on this uh, Guff and Stuff uh, radio uh, station, um, and uh, we're uh, we're very thankful for uh, you, uh, Mr. Uh, Jacob Baczynski, and uh, we look forward to Revenge of the Sunfish too. When it's finally uh, released. Yeah, no problem. Nice, nice doing an interview with you. Mm-hmm. Um, anytime. Yeah, yeah if uh, if you ever want to drop by any other time, just let us know, man. We'd be more than happy to uh, talk to you again. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, mm-hmm. uh, nice talking to you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's <laughs> that's Ezekiel. That's all right. Ezekiel. Yes, Ezekiel. I, yeah, I keep thinking of uh, Ezekiel. Oh. Kind of- <laughs> Vase, Ezekiel. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this conversation. We hope to uh, talk to you soon. Yeah, nice talking to you. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll be. Uh, we'll we'll promise soon. to keep you in touch. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, sign off on that note then. All right then. <laughs> All right All then. Right. <laughs> See you around. See ya. See ya. Bye. Well, that does it with uh, Mr. Jacob Bashinsky. Be sure to check out. Uh, Revenge of the Sunfish 2 on PC. Uh, like he said before, there is no sure due date, but rest of, but worry not, as he said, it will be coming out soon, and we can all delve into the madness that is Revenge of the Sunfish 2. Well, that about wraps it up for the Gaming Grotto. Uh, we really appreciate uh, the continued support. We would uh, really like to thank uh, Jacob Bashinsky for taking the time to uh, uh, chat with us for a bit. Um, be sure to check out RevengeOfTheSunfish.com, uh, home of uh, Bizarre Wound Games, and uh, his per- and uh, Bashinsky's personal blog. Um, also, uh, be sure to download uh, some of his uh, games in the game ar- in the games archive on RevengeOfTheSunfish.com. Uh, that about wraps once again this wraps up gaming grotto and we hope to see you guys again